Hm? Ah! Oh. Next time I have an idea like that, punch me in the face. Hey Throners, welcome to our podcast. I'm Mr. Blog. And I'm Cindy. And this is Game of Microphones, episode 17. Wow! I am joined this week with Cindy from Walker Stalker Con. At least that's how I know you from, but you are yep. all over the place. How would you <laughs> uh how would you describe what you're doing right now and where people can find you? Um, well, all things Walking Dead related. Um, as you mentioned, I work for Walker Stalker Con and I also work uh part time for Atlanta movie tours in Atlanta, Georgia, um, on their Walking Dead tours. And um people can find me or might know me by PD Sinderson and I am PD Sinderson on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Indeed. You know, what three times now I've been out to Atlanta for Walker Stalker Con, and not once have I done one of the movie tours. Oh, you need to. I know. I've been, and I don't think I'm going to be able to make it this this year to Atlanta, and I'm really oh, bummed all? about that. I don't think so. It's oh. well, a, like a day or two after the convention, it's yeah. my 20th wedding anniversary. Oh wow! So it's one of those things. I'm like, ah, I can't be a dick and skip out on my 20th wedding anniversary for <laughs> and she a doesn't Walking Dead make convention. Walk, she doesn't want to make Walker Stalker Con her anniversary trip. We did that on our 17th anniversary. <laughs> Actually, when you and I first met, that was oh, my yeah. 17th wedding anniversary. So wow. I, I, I think once is enough for her. <laughs> I, I get it. Uh, well, let me extend you this invitation then. You are Ooh. welcome to visit Dean and I anytime you want in Sonoy, Georgia, and we will give you a personal tour. Oh, now that is a offer I'm not going to be able to refuse. I'm going to, I'm going to hit you. We have that on, on record now. I want mm -hmm. to hit you up on that. So very yep. cool. Thank you. You got it. But we're not here to talk about The Walking Dead. We are not. We are here to talk about Game of Thrones. And man, <laughs> episode two of season six, home. I feel so lucky to be on this podcast after yeah, this episode. No kidding. This was such a spectacular episode. It was amazing. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, man. I mean, they're always amazing. You know, they're, they're, they really are. Rarely are they ever like, meh. But this one. Oh my goodness. So we have a lot of things to talk about. We got a great show. We actually got have a number of, uh, as always, we got some emails. We got some Facebook feedback. As I can um, imagine. But what's also really exciting, we finally got a phone calls into our, oh, I, I always forget the number, the, the, at least the area code. I think it's 813. <laughs> yeah, 813 Joffrey. We finally got three different <laughs> phone calls into it. Uh, so we have a number of those to go over. So th that's going to be a lot of fun. We got a lot of feedback to, to talk about. Of course, oh, we I have. Bet. Top five highlights, news about Game of Thrones, some feedback, and then next week on Game of Thrones before we close out the show. But man, let's skip any and all of that. Let's just get into our top five because I want to talk about this episode. It is just so <laughs> much fun. It's so awesome. So, Cindy, start us off with your number five. Well, my number five, I feel is the most boring of all of them, although there's nothing boring about this show. So I just labeled it as Aria has no name. And mm. I can't talk about an episode without talking about Aria. I love her so much. But, um, and, and I, well, I don't know. I was going to say, I, I don't feel like anything really super big happened with her, but, you know, people may disagree. But, God, I that little girl acting, you know, that, um, that, you know, the, the I, clearly she was being tested and she knew it. So I knew yeah. she would answer correctly. But, you know, after all that she's been put through to be like, you know, I'll let you sleep under my roof. I'll give you food. I'll give you your sight back. Yeah. And she just nailed it. And, you know, the quivering lip and the look on her face. And um, for that, you know, that little girl, she's she's just amazing. I love her so much. I, and I was so stoked to see Jack and Hagar show up for that. Oh, you know, it's yeah. like, okay, they're not going through the waif on this one. They're, they're, he oh, shows I up. I hate that waif, by the way. Really? You don't like her? Oh, I, I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> Poor girl. If I ever meet her, I'm going to be like, I hate you. I'm going to eat you with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> stick to the face. Um, stick to the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, quick question. Have you read the books? I have not. 
Okay, good. I just I just wanted to get that out of the way. I wasn't sure yeah. one one way or the other. So, um, yeah, she is a bit of a despicable character. Although oddly enough, I loved seeing her in the last episode. I kind of mm-hmm. enjoyed that little thing with the stick. You know, it, just that sense of all right, they're not just leaving her to be this poor homeless beggar blind right. child in the street. There's a purpose for what they're doing, and it was really cool to finally see, yeah. as you just pointed out. Going to give you a roof, going to yeah. give you your sight back. So there's that definite sense yeah. of, yes, you know, trying to really continues. loved when she went to, like, go get that bowl of change. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he was like, leave it. You don't need that. Or you're not a beggar anymore or something like that. Oh, yeah, that it. was that was pretty awesome. So I, I was – and that was, like, a, I don't know, a whopping minute out of the show. But right. that was <laughs> a great minute. And she looks – like you said, uh, Maisie Williams is killing it as Aria because she looked – so dejected, so skeevy and Ugh. gross and just messed up as that poor blind yeah. beggar. And I just, uh, I always think back to the beginning of the entire series and how the the Stark girls started out as these just oh, yeah. young, privileged, you know, almost like princesses in training type, you know, ladies um, that they were being raised to be. And even though Arya was always kind of that tomboyish and wanted a sword, she still was raised as someone who had always had food, always had clothes, always had a roof. Everything she's been through in the past several seasons is just, I always have in the back of my head where she came from. And like, God, if any other like young girl had had to go through this. Oh, yeah. And the first time here, and it's great that you bring up the past with it also, because the first time we ever meet Arya in the show during the mm-hmm. pilot was her, like Bran is trying to take a shot with his with his bow, mm-hmm. and she does it from behind him. So there's that sort of like, ha, in your face, I'm better than yeah. you are, Bran, even though you're a prince of Winterfell, you know. Uh, so we already got that that sort of haughty nature of Arya right off of the bat in the pilot. But even as you mentioned about how she, what she's been through and the, how she's been different the, as far as grooming of a lady, that Sansa took to that, and she was all right. about – the embroidery and doing all that stuff with, with her buddy Jane pool. But it was such a wonderful treat in this episode when Brienne and Sansa are talking and Brienne does tell her, well, you know, she doesn't dress like a lady <laughs> and Sansa's like, no, she wouldn't. Yeah. You know, that was such a wonderful thing too, because now Sansa finally gets to know that her sister no, is alive, right. you know? So uh, for how long were all of them, even back when Rob was still alive, how for how long were they all separated and having no idea if the other ones were alive? The, or not? the last time Arya was seen was when Ned Stark was beheaded. Right. That was the last time that she'd actually so been seen. Sansa now knows that mm-hmm. that Bran and Rickon were not killed. Yep. And now Arya is still alive, <clears throat> so she's the yeah. only one who actually has gotten this information. Yes. But great that it's finally somebody has it. Yeah, so that means there's only one, you know, yeah, one, two, three, four yeah. Stark kids still alive. And, you know, if you want to count Jon Snow. Right. And at one time, you probably thought they were all dead. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's a great one. Yes. That's a good number five. So Arya Stark. Thanks. Blind beggar. Love it. Uh, my number five, uh, having nothing to do with the Starks, really. <laughs> But the wildlings versus the crows. And oh, I yes. loved seeing Tormund's giant, Tormund giant Spain just mm-hmm. walking in there with 1 1 behind him. Actually, I think 1 1 came in first. Seeing the uh, all the crows just freaking out, dropping their swords. Mm-hmm. Sir Alistair shaking in his boots. Probably, you know, he stood his ground at least for a little bit. He tried. And then when that one archer puts that <laughs> arrow into a 1 1. Nope, he's not having any of that. No. Whap, whap, done. You know, he painted the walls of that dude, and I love the little smear yeah. of blood as he throws him on the ground. That, the body slam against the wall. I that's that's not one of my top five, but it's in my like little mentions that I gotta oh. mention the giants and the body slam. <laughs> I love Somewhere. that. Now that is, I'm just gonna mention because we don't have a book talk section anymore. I do like to to bring up little little bits about the books. Uh, that is something that does happen in the book. Oddly enough, not quite uh. the same setup. But it's funny. This is particularly funny because George R. R. Martin had a bet with a friend of his or something came up where he, he said he would put his buddy into the show or into the books. If so, I forget what this whole situation was, but he did have his friend as Sir Patrick. And Sir Patrick got picked up by one, one smashed against the wall and, and all. That oh, kind. my God. So that's, that's what he did to his friend was that's smashed funny. it up against the wall. Uh, loved it, but I, I thought that was a, just a phenomenal scene. I'm always happy to see Tormund. 
Uh, and, oh, yeah. and the fact that Dollar said that is what he did. He came and got them. That ended all of that. And how cool was it to yeah. see Davos? You know, they got their bacon saved right at that moment because well, they were the, coming through with that sledgehammer, man. Oh, yeah. But just the fact that that relationship that Jon Snow built with them, yes. they came there because yeah. John, they were told Jon Snow has been killed. And they came. So that, to me, was great. Oh, it was phenomenal. And again, uh, getting into the whole loyalty thing, and I do love that with how loyal Tormund is to Jon Snow. And even the fact that Davos, you know, he's not a fighter, but he'll draw his sword. And when they're in that room <laughs> guarding his body, oh, man, I got, you know, that was just like, yeah, go! I know. You what did, know? It was what so did he say? He said something like, I'm not a fighter and I apologize for what you're about to yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is either, I took that either as like for him just being violent or the fact that it's, he's, he's going to be so bad at it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he would do such a bad at, job at it. Uh, please forgive me. At least me. he'll try. At least he'll try. I don't know. It's that's one of this show. You know, I'm on record for saying it really is a very mean spirited, just nasty show in general. But every so often, you get these particular moments of I don't know. For me, that was almost joy. Joy. You know, there's like there there wasn't anything mean spirited about it. It was actually like no. We're going to do this and we're going to do this for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. And man, I, I just love it when that happens. It does not happen enough on this show. I love Davos um, in particular. Davos I've is always the liked best. him. He's the, I love that dude as well. And and he's just such a great character, great actor. And I feel terrible. I can't remember the actor's name right now. But um, he always does a phenomenal job. So that's my number five, the Wildlings versus the Crows. And it really does end wonderfully with Sir Alistair and all those other traitors being shuffled off to jail. Yes. Justice, justice is never served on this show. It you're right. Is. You're right. That sh- that that in an, in is in and of itself makes it's it amazing. worthy of the list because yes. justice is rarely served in our favor, the fans' favor on this yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. What's your number four? So my number four is actually it was kind of hard for me. Um, it, it's more my least favorite moment on yeah, the show. That happens. Um, but. It's it's the Boltons in general, Ugh. okay. And so I've got what I've actually written here is uh, Bolton has a boy, yay. Ramsey kills <laughs> Roos, boo. Ooh. Dogs kill baby, serious oh, boo. Oh. Um, Dear God, that was. <laughs> I I am one person who likes Roos Bolton. I actually kind of have a crush on him. No, you're not the only person. And oh, really? Because I, I know, I know. No, I know at <laughs> least. You know, I want to say two other people, but okay. definitely one other person I know has a bit yes. of a crush on Roos, and they always I, apologize whenever it comes up. I've got a crush on Roos, and when that stabbing first occurred, and I think they did this on purpose, but for a split second, I thought Roos had stabbed Ramsey. Me too. I was worried to ask you that yes. if you thought that because there, oh, they I did, did have that split moment where you're just like, I was like, wait, oh, wait, I can't believe stabbing you did Roos? it. And then, then when it was revealed, I was just like, "No!" And, I was a little uh, disappointed that Roos fell for it. Oh, no, I had, I've always so had bad. a little bit more respect for Roos than that, thinking he's a smart man. He's a vicious, yeah. evil guy, but he was at least smart. Smart, but yeah. not that smart. Obviously not. You know, that's why I thought he was the one doing the stabbing. Me I too. He tricked Ramsey into a false sense of something, and. Then without Roos there, Ramsey, there's nothing to stop him. And then what he did with the dogs and the baby, that was just awful, awful. I couldn't even watch it. That was the worst. And actually, th- this is one of those moments where I was so happy they did not show, it. show us anything. You know, I'm like, please, I don't yeah. want to. I do not no. want to come on this episode and talk about watch that, that if they showed us. It was, it, that was just horrendous and horrible. I mean, mm-hmm. Ramsey is truly becoming one of those villain, villains, villains <laughs> that you're just. I, at this point, you don't even love to hate him anymore. You just oh, no. hate no, just him, hate. you know. Um, although uh, I did like, I liked two of his lines just, you know, from enjoyment of watching of the course, show and the writing of the show. I did like when he said to her. Um, she said something about Lord Bolton, and he said, I am, I Lord, am Lord Bolton. And I was just like, yeah. ooh. And then he says, I prefer being an only child. And I was like, oh, God, I hate him so much. Oh, that was brutal. And then you got, then you got the Car Starks, <sighs> you know, that are now joining yeah. up with him. Yeah, he's going to lose a lot of the other families in the, in the North because of yeah. this. He obviously, Ramsey Bolton is just one of those dudes that zero fucks given. He just does exactly. not care, you know. <laughs> 
Uh, and we, we had that weird moment last episode where he was so tender with Miranda, where it's suddenly like, oh, does he have some sort of conscience? Does he have some kind of humanity inside of him? <sighs> and then you get this episode no. and you're like, nope. Nope, none. Nope. That guy's a complete and utter monster of a human being. And poor Lord uh, Lady yeah. Walda, uh, she did not deserve that. And to hear her I begging know. for herself, I'll just go away. I'll just go. I'll just go back um, to the Riverlands. Just let me go. That, nope. That was just too much. That was, was so bad. <laughs> but yeah, mm-hmm. that that's a, a very good number four. I actually have that a bit higher up on my list only because I, I feel like we're going to get a lot of, uh, you know, the implications for what this is going to mean down the that's road. That's true. You know, that that's pretty big. I mean, again, he's going to lose a lot of the North because of the fact that Roos is now gone. Uh, this was also part of a deal between, oh, uh, God, why am I? The phrase. The phrase. So this may lose the phrase as well once he finds out that uh, his, his right. daughter, Walda, was killed. So, you know, this very bad in terms of the political aspects of this. Not that he, again, I don't think he really cares. He's no. got bloodlust going it, on. Unless he's able to cover it up the same way he is attempting to cover up Bruce's is that they were poisoned True. or their yeah. enemies came and I'm here to avenge their deaths. You know, I mean, Ugh, who's going to tattle beastie. on him? I don't know. I wouldn't dare tattle on him. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Cause then you'll get, yeah. Yeah. Uh-uh. You'll get stabbed or eaten by dogs. Ew. He's the worst. Very good number. I think that's something everybody can agree on. <laughs> He's Bolton. the worst. <laughs> He's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, um, uh, when I was on uh, the tour the other day, uh, the tour guide that was with me, she watches as well. And she was asking me this question and told me that her and another friend of hers were having this argument on who was... Uh, the most sadistic or the more psycho Joffrey or Ramsey. And um, mm. she, uh, she believes Ramsey is, and her friend was arguing for Joffrey. And, and I was saying how awful Joffrey is too. And, and I don't really know which one ultimately is worse. Ramsey uh. has been around longer and has practiced his sadism longer. Joffrey was just beginning and was still yeah. young. So if he had not died, who knows? They both are clearly not just assholes or bastards or jerks. They are like sick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick yeah. No, psychopaths. Both no doubt there. No <laughs> doubt there. Oh, that's a good question. Ramsey or Joffrey? I mean, personally, I would say Joffrey or no, excuse me. I'm, I would say Ramsey is the worst of the two. Mm-hmm. Uh, only because, you know, with with Joffrey, it, he was being raised to be a king. He's being raised to be a spoiled brat and all these kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Whereas Ramsey, oh, that's no excuse mm-hmm. necessarily. No. I don't know. They're both sadistic little they were dickheads. Sadistic. So it's really hard to say who is worse. I think Joffrey was just younger and hasn't didn't have as much time to yeah. get into his practice of his sadism. You know, the who thing knows? with the Boltons, though, is that be, the, the, the house family sigil is the flayed, flayed man. man. This is like, you know family pride right. to, to to flay people which uh, that's, that's pretty nasty. bad but it is i don't know i don't i don't miss joffrey i can say that much and ramsey well, has, has been a wonderful I don't, villain i don't miss that and i'll keep this short not to go off topic no, i don't no, no. i don't this miss wonderful. i don't miss joffrey either and um but i find i found myself a little bit in the last episode and at the end of last season with marjorie and even cersei incarcerated and treated the way that they were saying Joffrey would not stand for this. This would not be no, happening if Joffrey no. was still around. And that was kind of, I, I did get a kick out of that with, with, and I hope I'm not stepping on one of your tops here, oh, but no. bringing up Cersei and Tommen. Uh, that was an interesting little conversation there yeah. where Tommen is realizing how he has failed as king by allowing these things to happen. Mm-hmm. He allowed his wife and mother to be incarcerated uh, and put through what they were, what they had been put through. So yeah, Tommen is, you know, maybe he's learning. Uh, maybe that is what it takes to be a king, that you do have to be so sadistic that you would not allow that kind of thing. Uh, but I don't know. I, I did enjoy that scene with Tommen and Cersei, though. And, yeah. and on one hand, you feel sympathy for both people, but I'm also like, oh, God, please don't give Cersei any sort of power because yeah. she always abuses it no matter what. You know, uh, she had her power and she actually put the faith militant in, in charge. She kind of made she all did this, this happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
that's a fascinating little like mess of a thing that's going yeah. on with that end of the, the the story with Cersei and Tommen and then and Jamie. But we could talk mm-hmm. about some of that later. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get into my number four here. Okay. The death of Balon Greyjoy, Ugh. and the reintroduction of Yara and Pike. Yes. So I had been one. I mean, uh, these are how do I put this? The Greyjoys are actually many people, book readers and and show watchers alike, are kind of divided on the Greyjoys. Some people love them, some people hate right. them. I actually really like the Greyjoys. I like uh, some of them. I hate some of them. Absolutely. But as a family, <laughs> and just as a whole thing, right. I kind of dig that. As as somebody with Viking blood himself, mm-hmm. I get a real kick out of, out of the Vikings of Westeros. And, and you know, we first met Yara. It's still one of my favorite scenes in all media when uh, Theon is hitting on his sister, having been oh, gone so, so long. He have doesn't you, even know it's his sister. Have you ever watched... Um... The episodes with the commentary. No, no, I never. So, um, in between the seasons, one year when I was just jonesing for more, it was over too soon. I watched on YouTube. A lot of the episodes are on there with the commentary, and that scene is um, Theon and Yara are the two that give the commentary, and some of the stuff that they were talking about <laughs> while filming that scene, it was just really funny. I believe it. That had to <laughs> yeah. be so uncomfortable for everybody involved. <laughs> Uh, even more so, of course, if they were real siblings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, and here's a funny thing is um, Lily Allen, the singer right. who is Alfie Allen's brother, was asked to play that role <gasps> of Yara. Oh, no. And she did. They specifically said she she was like, no, I know what happens with those two. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's just that's not way happening. too weird. And I'm really glad because she is just way too petite to ever have been Yara. Yeah. That would have made no sense. Um, but that whole thing with... Of course, the death of Balon happening at the hands of his brother. Uh, now, they don't say his name specifically in the show. We believe that that, that is Euron Greyjoy. Have we that seen is his him name. before? Is nope, this nope, his nope, nope. That's okay. his introduction. I didn't, think, I didn't think I'd seen him, but I wasn't sure. Now, we had seen the other, what should be another Greyjoy, but I think they, they've given him a different name, but the, the drowned god priest that we see now when, at the funeral for Balon. Okay. Now... The, here's another one of the, and the reason why this really made my list, and this is another one of those uh, dog whistles for book readers, was yeah. the moment they said King's Moot. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if other people picked up on that, Mm-mm. but the King's Moot is a bit of a big deal for oh. book readers because this is a gathering of everybody. We're going to see this later on, I'm sure, but it's uh, what a King's Moot is, and this is an actual thing is a gathering of everybody who has the right to be king, mm-hmm. and it's basically like a vote. Okay. Who's going to be the new king? So this this is interesting for a lot of reasons. You've got Euron, who we now know killed Balon, who is the brother of Balon. So that would be certainly a good a good candidate. Yara, who wants to be a king, who should queen. be the heir, I guess. I don't exactly. Know. <laughs> and then we have young Theon, who is on his way home. Yeah. You know, he's the one that did say, "Where's he going? Home." Home. So he's going to be showing up at a very interesting time if he shows up. I mean, we, of course, don't know if he's actually going to make it. Will he get picked up by somebody? Will he even survive? Who the hell knows? Poor Theon. <laughs> <laughs> now, so, I, I didn't have this as one of my five either, but it is in my little mention thing. It's just Yara um, and Lord Greyjoy dying because I hate him. But... um. Love y- Yara. And just the scene well, between Sansa and Theon, too, was just so great. Before Theon, you know, announces that he's going to so leave. So how, how do you feel about... How do I... I I'm, how do you feel about Theon at this point? Because that's another character that people yeah. have so many mixed emotions about, you know? Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess his acting is just so phenomenal. There's everybody in this. They're acting so phenomenal that he sways me um, yeah. every time. So when he's doing really horrible things, I think horrible things about him and think that he deserved everything that he was getting from Ramsey in the beginning. But then that became so awful yeah. and ongoing that you can't help but feel for Theon. And then... You know, when uh, Sansa first comes there and is thinking that Theon, you know, killed her brothers, 
her treatment of him, and then that's finally revealed that he didn't. Although he did kill two boys, he did kill two boys. He killed two but, boys. But the but, thing was, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, he just sorry. he wins me over every time. Like yeah. I'll sway with whatever's <clears throat> happening in this in his scene. If he's being a traitor, then I hate him. And when he's when he's broken, I feel for him. And I feel exactly the same way. And it's it's been one of these difficult things for me because in so many ways. I've always liked Theon. He's cocky. Yeah. He's he's got he's you know he is so imperfect. He's always been in the shadow of of Rob Stark. He was this kid who was taken from his family when he was ten years old to go live with the Starks because of losing a war right. uh, against the Greyjoys. You know, and this came up. I love the fact that Balon brings this up, bring brought that up again. He lost all of his sons in that war. You know, the the Greyjoy. Yeah. Um, and and I do love that Balon brought up the fact that he is the f- remaining king of the wo- of the War of Five Kings, mm-hmm. or he was the remaining king. Uh, so technically, he sort of won. Yet at the same time, the last time we saw the Greyjoys was season three when Yara is showing up to rescue Theon. <laughs> She's greeted with two dogs, and she's like, nope, 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 I'm out of here, get out of here, everybody out, yeah. everybody out, fuck Theon, he doesn't even want to come, you know, so they they bail on that, and Theon's, his whole arc has been, yeah, cocky to really bad and just making the worst decisions imaginable to being horribly tortured, getting his wang chopped off, I mean, all these horrible, horrible things, and now I just can't help but sympathize with the guy. When he did finally own up to right. not killing Brandon Rickon and then helping Sansa... Um, and then the last episode, we get that moment between the two of them where he's trying to help her get warm as they're trying to escape. I can't help but find no. so much sympathy for Theon Greyjoy right now. And yeah. and you're right. Alfie Allen has killed it mm-hmm. as far as, as acting that role. And, and I'm a fan. And I am a fan of the Greyjoys. I can't wait to see what's going to happen with this King's Moot. And wow, that bridge. I, and I got to say, I loved the the effects on that bridge when oh, Balon and Euron are standing there. It was like, I'm afraid of heights. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, get off that thing, man. That's terrible. I don't um, like being on any rope bridges. <laughs> have we seen Pike in the opening credits before? Yes, I noticed it this time. Season okay, three. We have. I didn't but know season was three was the last time. You know, I we, just, we haven't seen them. That was actually almost going to be one of my top fives was just. The opening credits, even though they're not new, is just how much I love the opening credits for this show in general. Oh, that they're great, fly over they? the map and all of the way they built the little, you know, the the kind of steampunk mechanism of all of the towns, if you want to call them yeah. that, or the regions. I just love Game of Thrones opening credits. <laughs> Have you seen somebody just, uh, they they redid that with paper. Oh, wow. It's on, it's on YouTube somewhere, but somebody actually... Built it all with paper and well, and I have the pop up book. Whole thing. Oh, you do? Yeah, I have the pop up book of it. I love oh, it. Oh, that's cool. And it, does that have like the the kind of opening mm-hmm. credits with each? Oh, very awesome. And I do love how Winterfell is the one that has really changed from the first season on. Yeah. You know, first it was the the mighty Stark Winterfell, then it was the burning Winterfell, and yep. now we get the. I get. I still get angry every when goddamn see the time flayed, I see the flayed man. I know. On there. I'm like, I know. I remember the first time you saw that, you're just like, <gasps> "Oh, it was horrific. I hated that." So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's my number three, or excuse me, my number, number four. four. Greyjoys, the death of Balon, uh, and then the King's Moot, which I cannot wait to see, and, and the introduction of Euron, Yara. I mean, I love it. They've been gone for so long, and now all of a I sudden know. we're getting this great infusion. Of some gray joy <laughs> action. So I'm stoked on that. What's your number three? So uh, my number three and my three, two, one basically are, as you'll see, they're like one or two words with exclamation points. So number three is dragons. Nice. Yes. <laughs> dragons. And Tyrion letting the two dragons go. Like that was amazing. Him telling that story, him talking to the dragons, his fear. That, when he was first walking down the stairs, I was like, this isn't going to end well. Although I knew, I, I, I mean, I, I was pretty sure that Tyrion was not going to just all of a sudden die by the dragons right now. But um, I was fearful for him. Um, but I just really liked that scene and um, just dragons. That's all I have to say about it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was definitely getting a little bit worried for Tyrion when when he was going down there. I'm like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> do you 
do you really need to be doing this right now? I don't know. There's something about that. Because he had asked Miss Sande, like, do, do the dragons know you? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, dude, send her down there. What and are you at doing? At least have her by down? your side. So they're like, okay, yeah. we know her. You must be okay then. I thought that's why he asked her that, is I thought he would have her by his side at least. Me too. <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea why he was doing that. So he goes down there, he does that. I'm just like, and that was, that was spectacular. And and there, there's, I mean, really, that line at the end there. The next time, what, what did he say? Something like, the next time I have an idea like that, punch me punch in the me face. In the face. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love that. It ended well, so I don't know why then he said that because he was leaving well, safely. It ended very well, and yeah. that gets me wondering. Uh, you know, there are a lot of speculation, a lot of rumors about that, whether or not Tyrion has any Targaryen blood himself. Oh, that's true. I so, forgot about that. I was thinking about that when he was going down there. Uh, like, you know, the dragon, it, it started getting its fire ready. I know. You saw that, like, in the back of his throat. Yeah. I mean, there'd be nowhere for, for him to run or oh, cower no, to. If they he breathed toast. out that fire, he'd just be gone. I got a little concerned right then. I'm like, oh, 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 is this the end of Tyrion? What a no. shitty way for Tyrion to go know, out. No right? way. But I, I did wonder about whether or not, oh, is there some Targaryen blood that the dragon picked up on and saying, no, we can't kill him. He's going to be riding one of us eventually. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but man, I love, and it was great to see the dragons again. <sighs> yes. you know, I, I, and I they do this, such a, they do such a good job on their animation of those. They do dragons they're amazing that was exactly what i was going to say i i am so impressed with how much they are putting into their cgi because mm -hmm. that that looked great yeah. that looked really really great just, and when they're walking like when they walk on their knuckles or whatever it is they yeah. their talons are just it's so creepy looking have you ever seen like bats walking yeah that's kind of what it reminded yeah. me of i was looking at that like the way that they're it seems like their wings similar to a bat are just like their fingers right, right. so the way that they're walking they're, they're, it was cool, man. I loved it. And and the, how they kept them largely in the shadows. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, speaking of sympathy for horrible things, like we were just talking about with Theon, got to have a little sympathy for these dragons. They've been kept down in this dark dungeon oh, now for how in, long? You know, I was in tears when she locked them up, when she tricked them in there and had to put the chains around their necks and they were crying and she walked away. <laughs> I, I remember was a what, devastating scene for me. <laughs> I remember when that episode came out, people were like, you know, you know, as people do with any TV show, they're going to start bitching and complaining about a TV show. And they, and I remember at that point that people were saying, I felt more emotional connection to the dragons yeah. than anybody else. You know, that oh, made hush. me cry. And that's what I thought. I was like, oh, come on. You know, that's ridiculous. No, I felt but, that, but it wasn't as a uh, criticism of the rest of the show. I know. I know. And that's how I felt about it, too. But it was emotional. Danny yeah. was really upset doing that. Uh, but God, that's, that's a great number three dragons. Thanks. And you know, part of what's making these great is you and I are not overlapping at all. We're covering so much ground. <laughs> uh, Cause that is one of the funny things. Well, yeah, not yet. We're obviously going to on a, on a <laughs> thing or two. Um, but it, that is one of the things about the structure of doing the top five versus just a recap, you know? Oh Yeah. It, sometimes you know we'll get into some things in the notes and all that, but you know, look, we're not going to always cover everything on this because look, do you need a recap? You just saw the damn no, show. No, and that's no, always probably been not. my complaint about some podcasts in general. Is like I'm obviously lis listening to the podcast because I like the show, so I clearly just watch the show. I don't need a play by play. That's why yeah. I've always loved um, Jason's talking, the Talking Dead cast. No, no, no. You mean the Walking Dead cast? The Walking Dead cast. Sorry. No, and that's I was I was about ready to say all credit where credit yeah. is due. You know, we have borrowed the. We of course have have um, pimped. You know, Jason has pimped out his top five format for this show, and also Grace it and I works. use that. It does, and Grace and I because use you, that for under the comic covers as well. The top you three. You typically or top five. you typically end up covering everything, or at least you cover everything that most people want to talk about or hear about, but you don't Pretty do it much. in a way that's like, "Hey, you just watched this. Now let me tell you all about." Let me tell you, know, you what you just play. saw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so kudos, Jason. Kudos, Shout Jason. Shout out to you. <laughs> Shout out to you. Well, that's cool. Dragons. That's hard to top, but. Oh, yes, you can do it. My number three, <laughs> Bran's Visions. <laughs> and I loved, first of all, I loved getting back to Bran. Oh, my Mr. God. We haven't seen him in over a year. 
But season four is the last <laughs> time we saw Bran, and he wow. was down there with with the Green Seer down in the roots. Now they've changed the actor for the Green Seer, and oh but my not god, for Bran. <laughs> not for Bran. No, he's still the thirty year old, eight year old boy. But <laughs> him and Carl, right? <laughs> totally. But to get Max von Sydow of all amazing oh, actors no. to be the Green Seer, I'm like, yes, I was so happy <laughs> about that. But. More to the point, Brand's vision. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So, and here's I don't. I hope they did a good job of explaining this. That once you're connected to the trees and the weirwoods, that you can kind of see through all time and space. You know. So he's able to go. I didn't quite understand into the past. that. I didn't because I knew they that didn't he could, explain it well. I knew yeah. that he could warg, so I knew he could see through the eyes of other animals, but I didn't understand why he could see the past. So that helps. So some of that is that he's connected now to the trees. And the Weirwoods. Now, the Weirwoods are the one that uh, Ned would always go to the one, the one that you always see at the beginning of that opening tree, sequence, right. the big tree at Winterfell. And that tree has seen many, many things. Now, Bran can actually tap into that. And there are Weirwoods throughout oh. all of Westeros. They can, and what he's being taught so he's is how to tap into So he kind of can see through the that. tree and all yes. that that tree has lived through and seen in its exactly. age. Exactly. And okay. there are Weirwoods throughout the all of Got Westeros it. that have been there for thousands of years so you can really through the network of the roots and nature and all that kind of stuff so it's it's this wonderfully sort of buddhist quantum mechanic sort of thing that he can you know they don't get in all that but 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 to be able to see young ned benjamin liana and then well that's then uh, that's what my number two is okay i'm stepping on your number two go ahead and say it willis Hodor has a That's name. What, so mine is Hodor talks. Hodor point, talks. Point, yes. Point. Oh my god! And I was so worried right then that we we're going to see some horrible traumatic event, right. like somebody, like I don't know, hitting you know Hodor over the head with something, and then suddenly he's like Hodor. Yeah. Um. But how that 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 was I uh, I can't contain myself. That was such a treat. It was, it was. to see a young Hodor, and his name is Willis. Willis, he has a real name. I everything about that to see old man as young man to I mean to all of that. It was just and then it, and I forget the name of the girl. I didn't go back and, and rewatch the show. But when when Bran asks Hodor, you know, who is this girl? Mm-hmm. Hodor, Hodor. And and what what was really what neat happened? about that scene, not only what happened, but what was so great about that scene was you get a sense that whatever we think about Hodor we don't know. Something is still turning in his head because he actually respond. You know, right. he reacted to what was happening with what Bran was saying. Yeah. So there is definitely uh, there. There's a person in there, and it's it's. Oh my God! How is he trapped in there? You know, yeah. what what's going on in poor Hodor? That there is his whole life in there, and I want to know now. I mean, I've always Hodor is by far one of my fa- always has been one of my favorite characters in the book and the show, all of it. Christian Narn as Hodor. The dude is mm-hmm. awesome. And that just, I'm actually, I'm trying to look up. Oh, there it is. You, I, I could reach up and pull it down. But uh, no. you can, one of my little Funko Pops, this oh, one yeah. that I'm pointing out, that's actually Hodor. I only have two Game of Thrones little Funko Pop figures, Hodor and Tyrion somewhere <laughs> up there. Um, and I didn't even want Tyrion. That actually, somebody just gave that to me. But I bought Hodor because that is the one that yeah. I'm like, that's my character. He has a name. Willis, that, I I got so excited. And I know in certain things they've they've kind of caught up to the book and now are past it. So is that new one? To me. Did you know Hodor could speak and was Willis, nope, or is that nope, new to you? Nope, 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 new to me. Oh yeah. The, on, the only thing, I, okay. So I'll, I'll say this about the book. Uh, the only thing that was from the book, for instance, uh, Arya. That's we're not caught up with Arya nope. yet. And what happened with Balon Greyjoy and the King's Moot? happened a long time ago. Oh, okay. It was very surprising to see that happen when it did, but I think there is a specific reason why that's happening now, and I'll get into that with my my number one here in a little bit. But um, no, most things work. That's why we don't have a book talk section anymore. Yeah. It would be really useless uh, because there are only a few little tidbits here and there, but no, no, no. This Hodor thing, 100% new to me. I was so stoked on that. that. That got me... Seriously, more excited, I think, than than almost anything else in the show. Um, oh, I loved it. I love Willis. Willis. Yeah. What you talking about, Willis? Now we can throw that out there all <laughs> the time. There's a meme out there with that. 
I already saw it. Yeah, I stole it. (laughs) Odor. What you talking about, Willis? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Okay, what's your number two? Well, so my number two was Hodor Talks. Oh, that's right. And just the whole, like, seeing Bran again after not seeing him for over a year. I was like, oh, finally. And then the visions of the past. And then so my question is, is this how we're going to find out who Jon Snow's mom is? Through Bran's visions. I really hope so. That That is a huge <laughs> hope. Now, I found it interesting also that they made a big point. Now, this, again, a new thing for, for even book readers. The idea of him leaving this cave. Right. And going out into the world. That's kind of new. So I'm like, oh. oh. I, I thought, honestly, even I thought Bran would be hanging out there in the roots doing groovy, nifty stuff in the roots and, and doing his thing. Just but, tripping uh, out. <laughs> just tripping out. But, you know, looking at the path. But he... Well, yeah, that's probably giving away a little bit. Um, I do think there's even a bit of a two-way communication that can happen. Mm. Now, Brands, he's also got a lot of powers. He is the war. Right. He can go into the, you know, so he's got some good magic juju going on with Brands. So I'm, I'm curious how this is all going to play out. But I want to see so many more of these these. I want to see so many more of these flashbacks, whether it's Robert's Rebellion, whether it's the Tower of Joy. There there are certain things. And yeah, of course, specifically Jon Snow's parentage, although I, I, I really hope poor Bran doesn't have to be subjected to how that specifically happened. No, but maybe no, we can but get, just the answer. I hope it didn't happen in front of a tree because then that poor exactly. Bran will be like, I bleach, I bleach. Oh, my God. No. Exactly. <laughs> But who knows what he can see now? I don't know. Uh, and I do hope we get a return to to being able to see maybe, you know, Ned and, and uh, Caitlin. Caitlin, excuse me. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll get to see them again. I, I, I want to see Sean Bean oh, show up again. Yeah, I want to see a young great. Ned. I want to see a young Robert. I, I would love to see, you know, right now, because I do feel we are, not that I feel, this is a known fact. We are in the, the you know, the peak has happened of this show in terms of, what the events are, we're coming towards the close. You know, it's, you can see the ending mm-hmm. now and things I think are beginning to, there's a certain wrapping up, not not a real wrapping up, but, but one thing I even felt with this whole episode, and normally I like to save my number five to be like a, my idea of what the general theme of the whole show was, but I didn't do it this time, but I do feel with home, the general theme was a bit of a passing of the torch to the next generation mm-hmm. between the Cersei Tom and conversation or of course, of course, the Roos and Ramsey events that happened there, um, and I feel like there was even another one that felt like a little bit of a. And with Jon Snow, he's kind of back, you know. So that's another passing of the torch. Um, I want to see more of that with the past because I I did enjoy seeing that flashback. I want to see young everybody and see how that fits into the whole story. And it's so interesting to me that everything that's happened in Game of Thrones. Is all because of the death of John Aaron all the way back. And, yeah. you know, at this point, the idea of like Lysa is like, oh, that's so quaint. That seemed like it happened so long ago. The death of Ned Stark. Oh my God, that happened so long ago. <sighs> the Red Wedding. Oh, I know. How huge was that? That was three seasons ago. Three seasons ago. Yeah. Every time I hear of a friend that's just starting the. To watch Game of Thrones, <laughs> the jealousy I have of being yeah. able to watch it again for the first time, like oh, I wish I could do that again. <laughs> oh, I feel that way with so many things, but it's it's. And Game of Thrones is funny because we were my wife and I. We did start watching the show, and I had not read the books yet, and she got so into it. She's like, "Oh my god!" And she she did the Wikipedia thing and read through everything. She spoiled Ned Stark's death for me. <gasps> I was so pissed. I'm like, are you serious? Really? You're going to spoil that for me? So out of spite, I'm like, fine. I'm not going to allow didn't. that. No, 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 no. I didn't spoil anything for her. I'm not that kind of guy. She didn't care. She already read it all in Wikipedia. Oh, okay. She knew. But that's how I read all the books. I'm like, I'm not going to let this happen oh, to me again. Okay. So Because I, I like the smug satisfaction of being ahead of everybody. So I sat yeah. there and I... Those are a lot of books to read through, and I and I finished book four about uh, about three or four days after book five was released, so I was able to just roll right into mm-hmm. it. And now I've been waiting this whole time, but it's it's I look forward to the past coming back a little bit. So let, let's get back on track here. <laughs> Sorry, was that your number two? That was my number two. My number two is the death of Roose Bolton and Walda and Child. 
Ugh, Ramsey. We can say that again. Fuck Ramsey. Fuck Ramsey. Say it with me. There you go. Fuck Ramsey. Fuck I like Ramsey. That. And yeah. Not in the good way. <laughs> not, <laughs> he won't enjoy it. Damn no. it. <laughs> yeah. About ready to say, I'm getting my strap on. Wait, I don't need a strap. Never mind. That's not the way that works. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no lube for you, buddy. Okay. What's your number one? Uh, who am I kidding? I know. I have a feeling our number one is going to be the same. Can I swear? <laughs> Are we swearing on here? We already did, didn't we? You didn't really. Of course, you can. This is a podcast. Yes, <laughs> we're talking so, Game of Thrones. If you, if you, if anybody's listening to this who's offended by bad words, you are watching the wrong that's show. That's true. <laughs> the show itself. Yes. Uh, so, John Motherfucking Snow. Hell, the breath heard yeah. around the world. Yes. Now, this is one of those things that I think. Come on, everybody saw this coming. You saw it, and they couldn't end it with it like the red woman leaving and he just no. not coming back to life. So it's like, of course, that's how it's going to end. He's going to take a breath and it's going to go they to black. They stayed on his body. They go to ghosts. <laughs> yeah, they, they sit there and drag out that last scene. Oh. I'm like, and I'm sitting there going, okay, he's got to come back. It was he's so gotta satisfying, come back. though. It was. <laughs> that, that's how you do a cliffhanger on an episode. Oh. <laughs> and I swear to God, every single episode of this podcast, I want to make a dig at another show's really bad cliffhanger because this is how you do yes. it. That was how you did it at the end of season uh, season five. That was great, too. Yeah. At least you know who the hell got stabbed. Yes. And this time, you know who came back to life. That was phenomenal. I love And here's a, a weird little thing that I really liked about that scene. And I was worried. Not worried, but I was I was kind of staring at the wounds, waiting to see the, them start healing. Me too, up. me too. I thought, they like, <laughs> I thought they were gonna do that, and I kinda like it didn't. Yeah. That it was just like <gasps> him coming back, you know. And and it was okay. And you're so watching the, the dog, you're watching um Yep, yep, yep. What's, what's his dire wolf's name? Snow? Whoa, well, uh Ghost. Ghost, I'm sorry. Ghost. Um just watching. I like that they gave him his red down. eyes. They finally gave him his red eyes. Mm-hmm. He should be a hell of a lot bigger. And the other thing about ghost. He's not supposed to make any noise at all. He's supposed to be a mute oh, wolf. That's but they didn't do it. Whatever. Exactly. But okay. whatever. I forget okay. it. I still okay. loved having him there. I love that entire scene. But what I really loved the most about it, and this is where I talked about the the notion of Balon Greyjoy's death happening when it happened, I think, for a reason. And I like this. Because Melisandre, I had so much sympathy for her in this episode, right? Yeah. You know, last we saw her, we know now she's 400 plus years old, scary old crone, like, eh, what the hell? But she's obviously so chock full of self-doubt. Well, that's what I was afraid that she wasn't going to be able to revive Jon Snow. Because sure. She, she was said that's not part herself. of her. Yeah. 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 You yeah. You could yeah. see it on her face when she was even doing what she was doing over Jon Snow's body. I was like, well, this isn't going to work because you're so full of self-doubt. Totally valid belief to have and thinking that that's the case. And and I was just like, oh, my God, this is terrible. You know. But here's the great thing. Go back. You got to go back a ways. And remember when she and Stannis were with Gendry mm-hmm. way back when and they had the whole cock leech thing going on. Yep. They're, you know, leeches on his junk. And it was about killing the three kings. Mm-hmm. It was, you know. Now I'm trying to remember who <laughs> who were the three kings because Robert was or was Joffrey. Joffrey. Uh, it was uh Renly. Renly. Was it Renly. Yeah, it was Renly and Balon Greyjoy. Those are okay. the three kings that were the leeches. We got Renly right away. We got Joffrey a little bit later, and this is what I was saying. In the books, it happened a lot sooner because you knew in the books early that Mel Melisandre's power is is there. Mm-hmm. Um because they worked. And I've always said on this podcast, Relore, the god of light is the one god that seems to keep showing up. And, you know, we've already seen it with Thoris of Mir being able yep. to bring Beric Dondarrion back. So this is this is not unprecedented. You know, we we we've, we've seen this happen before and I actually like that it was a bit of a they've been very judicious in their use of this whole reanimation of corpses. To right. the point where it's like, all right, this works. Uh, because there is – I'm only saying in the books as often as I am right now because we don't have a book talk section. And it just doesn't right. matter anymore. But in the books, there is another character, a major character that was reanimated. Uh, but it, it was like many days after this person's death. Mm-hmm. And the only thing left of this character 
was nothing but her vengeance. I or is that her? Do you think that they're? I, I know what you're talking about. Even though I don't read the books, I, I knew about that. Okay, we can say who think, it is now because it's so far gone. Yeah, do you Catelyn think Stark do in the book is no? I don't. She's okay. been dead for Too how long? long? Okay. So Catelyn Stark was reanimated. Right. And she's known as Lady Stoneheart. Uh, and all that's left of her is vengeance. And part of that was because she had spent three days floating in a river and was all gross and nasty. Now, but even with Beric, there was the sense that he was not still necessarily the same man that he was. Right. There was a little less of him than was previous. What's going to happen with Jon Snow? I know. You know, is he going to be the Jon Snow we know? Or will he be more of a vengeful, angry, you know, the last time... The last time he was living, you know, he had been stabbed to death. Now, here's another neat idea about Jon Snow. To to take the black, to become a member of the Night's Watch, that is until death. <gasps> is he now free? But even if he's free, will he take that freedom or will he take his position as the leader of them? I don't know. So seriously that he wouldn't abandon them. I think he will because he is ultimately still a Stark, and I think he does believe in loyalty and honor and all that. Mm -hmm. However, he could now claim the right of Winterfell as well. I mean, there, there are a lot of possibilities here, because he does not... So excited. He does not have to abide by his oath for the Night's Watch, because, well, he died. He, he fulfilled his oath until yeah. the last, and he was deemed a traitor by those who... He was killed by his own men. I think that alleviates any and any any need for this oath that he has i think he's done man <laughs> he can move on he can go he can be Tormund's girlfriend for all we care it doesn't matter <laughs> he can go hang out with one one and smash all the night's watch if he wants to and i don't think it's dishonorable anymore no nope. so what is he gonna do i don't know i'm so, so open excited. I'm so excited too. <laughs> what's gonna happen with Jon snow he's living again Ah, uh, will he be a shadow of himself? Will I hope he be not. the same dreamy Jon Snow that we all love? Stupid in his honor, just like his father, or is it his well, father? I'd That's be, a whole other I'd thing. be okay if he had just a little bit of like Bad boy. An ed yeah, a little bit of an edge, yeah. a little bit of vengeance, but still like him, but not such a pansy. I would love that. <laughs> oh my god, I would absolutely love that if he perfect. suddenly a little a little bit of a mean Jon Snow kinda a little more fuck you and everything mm -hmm. he does instead of a pardon me sir pardon me sir no i want to like, say fuck will, you sir you i know. will not be stabbed in the front ever again <laughs> exactly <laughs> man if you're gonna stab john snow you're gonna have to do it in the back because right. there is no way it's happening in the front it is not happening and, and i want to see him put a strap on for sir alistair <laughs> i'll tell you that much um <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, pegging is the theme of this episode. Um, no, I really, I, I, I want to see him just come at Sir Alistair like something fierce. And and Ollie, oh Ollie, you talk about traitors, right? The worst. Talk about traitors. So of course it's Jon Snow. He'll be noble. He'll be honor. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. He's a different person. Oh, I'm excited. It is very exciting. <laughs> Well, that wraps up our top five. Do you have any notes you want to go over that we did not go over? No, I, the the notes I had were ended up being covered in your items, so that's great. The only thing Very that I would groovy. say is that there's still things I can think of that we haven't seen yet that I wonder, like, will we see Gendry again? Will Nymeria <laughs> ever still, come back? No, no, <laughs> Gendry's still Gendry's still rowing the boat He's in a still circle. Rowing that boat. I can't see the land. Where do I get back? Yeah, I, um, I don't know about Gendry. The only Gendry, thing that I, don't know that, I that I don't think either one of us really had on our list, but we did touch on just a little bit, is is going to the Lannisters and um, yeah. Cersei and Tommen and oh, and Jamie's scene Jamie and with the, the Meister. That was a Meister, right? No, no, he's not a Meister. Who, that is who the, the that? faith. That's the that's the High Sparrow. The faith. The, the faith militant. Okay. That uh, little, that was interesting. That little standoff and yeah. Well, it's actually nice. One of our one of our voicemails. One of our voicemails covers that a bit, okay, so that'll good. be fun to go over. Um, and that was chilling. That was definitely like ooh. <laughs> and, and what I and and what I did like about it was that you know he could have killed him, but you look around, you see that Jamie was looking at all of them, mm -hmm. thinking, you know, I've been in worse fights, and I feel like he was calculating. Mm -hmm. 
How many can I take down before I die? I loved it. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, one thing I really enjoyed we didn't talk about was uh, Sir Robert, a.k.a. the mountain. Oh, yeah. We all know it's the mountain. That dude who was going on and on about Cersei's, you know, walk of shame. And, oh, she'd never seen a dick as big as mine. <laughs> you know, and then peeing on the wall. Then he turns around oh, and pisses yeah. on the mountain. That guy was terrible. He was horrible. But then I, there's something she so amazing. She licked her lips. Yeah. God. There's something so amazing about Sir Robert just yep. squishing his head like a water. It was like a cantaloupe against the wall. <laughs> um, and very similar to the one, one scene is that there's a lot of just squishing against the wall in this episode. Um, so utterly violent. My goodness. <laughs> I loved it. That was great. So yeah, my notes, Tyrion and the dragons, the ongoing home. So we, I think we definitely covered everything. My goodness. Um, I do have Tommen and Cersei. That was a, quite a scene for me. I did love that. I think just we covered everything. Everything, every episode that Cersei's in, or I mean, like every th- scene, especially when there's one on one, um, dating back to the first season, have been some of the best acting and writing oh, yeah. for me yeah. that I've seen. There was a scene with her and Robert. There was a scene with her and Ned that was just quiet and just the two of them, and it was so engaging. She's just, she's a phenomenal actress. Agreed. Oh, and I, you know, I know the one you're talking about with yeah. Ned, and that was the one where Ned was going to her, going, "I know the truth. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you the chance to get out of here," which was nail number fifty nine in mm-hmm. Ned Stark's coffin, coffin because <laughs> that dumbass with his nobility. Uh, love me some Ned Stark, but damn, dude. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> well, man. I think we just uh, covered everything we need to cover in our top five highlights about uh, Game of Thrones. What do you say we go ahead and take a quick break and yeah, come back with some news? That'd be great because my dog is looking at me like he wants me to let him out of the room and he's probably going to start barking if I don't let him out. <laughs> Very good. Let's go ahead and take a break. We'll be right back to cover news about Game of Thrones. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. And it is now time to go over some news that came out this week about Game of Thrones. Cindy, why don't you break that down for us? Uh, Yeah, well, um, from Entertainment Weekly, uh, to protect the Jon Snow twist, Kit Harington was asked by the show's producers to deliver an off-camera performance, too. So the role of an actor who departed a series that's become a worldwide sensation... Uh, so the first thing that Kit Harrington wants viewers to know after seeing his sur- his revival is sorry. I'd like to say sorry for lying to everyone. I'm glad that people were upset that he died. I think my biggest fear was that people were not going to care, <laughs> or it would just be hmm, fine. Jon Snow's dead, but it seems like people had a a similar to the Red Wedding episode kind of grief about it, which means something I'm doing or the show is doing is right. And I'd have to agree with him. And I think he's kind of silly if he really thought people would just go, hmm, Jon Snow's dead, oh well. <laughs> silly boy. <laughs> that is one of those things, you feel bad for an actor when they have to cover up that kind of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, partially because you're like, oh, come on. I, you know, we've all seen pictures of you on set in the, in the outfit, but I, I always feel bad for that. That was actually kind of sweet that he would actually apologize for yeah. that. It's like, oh, what that's a so sweetie. Sweet. <laughs> uh, a little great. off topic. Did you, well, not off topic because it's about the show, but when um, Rob Stark was, you know, murdered, um, did you hear about uh, what's his name? Richard? Um, the actor's name. I know it's Richard something. Sorry. Can't remember anymore. Um, yeah, I can't but anyway, remember. he said <laughs> after he rapped and he had to fly back home. Madden, Richard Madden. Madden, yeah. So he said that he cried on the plane all the way home. <laughs> he was like, so I was that guy on the plane crying. 
Oh. Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've been there. So the second item in the news, also about, uh, I almost said Kit Harrington's death. <laughs> no, oh, Jon no. Snow's death and reawakening, not Kit. He's fine, as far as I know. Um, from a 2011 interview with George R. R. Martin, a little insight into how he views coming back from death. My characters who come back from death are worse for wear. In some ways, they're not even the same characters anymore. The, mo- the body may be moving, but some aspect of the spirit is changed or transformed, and they've lost something. And, and that's really what it was that we were even just talking about we before. Were. Yeah, so... Interesting. I and uh, with him saying that, that's certainly a little <sighs> makes me a little nervous because I'm hoping he hasn't lost something, but maybe he's gained a little edge to him. Well, and um, yeah, I think that's what you're looking for. Yeah, <laughs> we want a little <laughs> bad boy Jon Snow for sure. Well, right on. Thank you. I think that pretty much covers any news that came out this week. And I, I do think they are really being a lot tighter this season than they ever have been about any information that's coming up with Game of Thrones this mm-hmm. season as opposed to what they were before. So that's pretty cool. That's good stuff. Well, wait, look over there. Do you see them? Ah, 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 <laughs> ravens. <laughs> <Yikes>. <laughs> All right, so we have some uh, feedback from listeners on Facebook. Why don't we just go ahead and alternate through these? Cindy, go ahead and take the first one here. Okay, so I believe it's Bianca. Yep, that's Bianca. Uh, Vargas. Uh, she and says, she was, I, I will interrupt and say, she was actually a volunteer at Walker Stalker Con in San Francisco. Oh, really? And oh. that is where I met her. Well, I love her then. <laughs> that's amazing. She came all the way from the Philippines. Oh, wow, really? Well, she's right welcome at any Walker Stalker Con. <laughs> <laughs> um, she says they did what hasn't been done with a baby yet. <laughs> Mark <laughs> on The Walking Dead. Uh, and then she 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 quoted the line that I quoted as well. I prefer to be an only child. Harsh, Bianca. Harsh. Harsh. All right. Next one is from Jeff Sukup. Sorry if I'm destroying your names. That's just going to happen. Ramsey is the best. He always makes sure his hounds are well fed. You, That's sir, are terrible. a monster. <laughs> Jeff, you are a terrible person. No, I'm sorry. You're probably delightful. Oh, and look at this next one. The next one, I'm not sure if I can say this right. It looks like Sherry Morford, maybe. Cherry? Um, is that Cherry? Cherry? Sherry? Something like that? No, I'm joking. Love For those Sherry. of you that don't know, um, Sherry... Uh, is a good personal friend of mine who also listens to this podcast. So and I love her hi, as Sherry. well. Um, and she says, Jon Snow is back. So happy with lots of little exclamation points. I knew she would be. <laughs> uh, Michael Tortzildo. Uh, Zild- Z- Dude, I'm sorry. Michael T. <laughs> Ramsey is in for a giant surprise when he rides on castle black oh yeah i can't wait to see one one versus ramsey <laughs> <laughs> yay and joseph alvarado says ah giant dragons and john snow best episode in a long time so Indeed. i think he kind of echoes my my sentiments of having just one word top fives <laughs> oh hell yeah that's the best way to do it <laughs> Jackie Arns Rossi says, everything got a teeny bit less hope- hopeless tonight. Oops. Dragons are free. Jon Snow is back. Yeah. Yay. Bridget McNeese says, love this episode, and I'm glad Jon is back. I was expecting it, but still so happy to finally see it happen. Ramsey is just the worst. <laughs> the actor <laughs> is doing a great job, but I hope the character's days are numbered. I hope he gets to the wall thinking there won't be many members of the Night's Watch and it's totally taken by surprise by the Wildling Army. It would be nice to see the giant Hulk smash Ramsey. Yeah, I would like that too. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> but, but she says that might be too easy a death for him. I want something slow and painful for him with Sansa dealing the final blow. I could get behind that. Me I'd enjoy too. that. <laughs> Theon and uh, Sansa just having their way with him, I think, would be a, <laughs> quite a treat. Uh, Deanna Saladino says, I miss Joffrey. What? I'm thinking just in relation to, to Ramsay. Yeah. 
That's what, I, I'm really hoping that's what you mean, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> she may have to uh, write back in and clarify. Indeed. Uh, Laura Will Swink? Laura Willie Swink. Willie Swink. Sorry, Laura. Or is it Laura or Laura? My, I don't know. I'm not sure. Sorry, Laura. Laura it's a lovely Laura. name. Laura. <laughs> it is. Um, she says, my eulogy to the late Lord Bolton. <laughs> you reap what you sow. Yeah. And you sowed one malevolent, sick, crazy mofo. Rest <laughs> in eternal misery and despair. I'm guessing she didn't have a crush on Bruce Bolton. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> As for the reawakened Lord Commander, happy to see him in the land of the living, but also very, very worried. The, did Melisandre never watch Pet Cemetery? <laughs> <laughs> I don't Good think they point. have VHS in Westeros, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Erica and Ful- Furter says, incredible episode, but once Ramsay killed his father and he summoned his stepmother and the baby, I left the room. I, hear I you knew are. it was going to be bad and I didn't need that image or even sounds. Husband let me know when it was safe to come back and he filled me in. I don't know how Ramsey is going to pay for all of his sins, but it better be good. I got to say, <laughs> so when that did happen, I I was cringing when I yeah, saw that too. starting up. Because I'm seriously, I'm just like, I don't want to have to podcast about this if they actually no. show us anything. Or I just, I'm so glad they left it to yeah. your to your wretched imagination. That is, that is just <laughs> more than enough because that was really one of the more brutal things in an extraordinarily brutal show that they've ever done. So I, I fuck Ramsey. That, <laughs> fuck Ramsey. That's right. So I think we were getting into some emails here. So a little bit mm-hmm. longer. Uh, so an email from uh, Jamie Dimmick. Jon Snow is alive. Hodor has a name. Giants. I'm counting the mountain as a giant. Fair enough. Killing people is fun. It's almost like a haiku. <laughs> <laughs> almost, yeah. I know I shouldn't laugh, but I did both times. <laughs> no surprise that Ramsey is still an unbelievable D-bag. He's worse than Joffrey. I didn't think I'd be able to hate anyone more than Joffrey, but apparently I can and I do. I hope his death is slow and painful. I really like this episode, but I hope the next time we get to spend more time with some of the characters. I appreciate seeing almost everyone, but just as each story was getting good, we cut away. I'm willing to wait a week or two between each story's progress. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Mm, very I, cool. I can, I can see that. Yeah, totally. Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate that. Uh, and our last email here is from Justin Weisenkamp. Jon Snow is alive! Anyway, now that that's out of the way, my wife and I were conversing after last night's episode and was and came upon an interesting inquiry with everything that happened with Cersei and then Tommen. How do you think Joffrey would have responded if he were still alive? Good question. Um, I don't it, I think you already pointed out Joffrey would yeah. not have put up with any of that. I think he yeah, would have had no. a lot of people killed. Yep. And I think the, the the faith militant would be gone already, quite frankly. Yep. Uh, love the show. Keep up the good work. Sincerely, Justin. P.S. Do any of you think that the show should have recast Bran at any point just to make the timeline less confusing? Because he looks 30, and yet characters like Tommen have only aged about half that. I don't know. I'm okay, I'm okay with it. Me I like too. Bran. I like that actor, and I like his portrayal of Bran. And I don't know if I've just gotten used to it with Carl, but I can I can suspend that disbelief. Me too. Um. I, yeah, and I'm I'm kind of glad they're keeping the same actor. It's it's it doesn't bother me so much. Well, just go with it. I suppose yep. in a world where summers last 15 years and winters right just exactly such as life. <laughs> Okay, well, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we do have a few calls, so we're going to go ahead and listen to those. Okay, the first one here is from Becky from Savannah, Georgia. Ooh. Hi, this is Becky Price from Savannah, Georgia. Um, That episode was amazing. I loved every minute of it. Um, I want to strangle Ramsey with my own hands. (laughs) And for a hot second, I thought that it was actually Ruth that stabbed Ramsey. And I got really, really excited and started, like, jumping. And then I was like, oh, shit, no. Anyway, uh, the whole brand storyline to me, I guess because I'm not a book reader, is, like, really, really, really boring. And I don't want any of it at all. 
Uh, also today I was thinking, like, what happened to Osha and Rickon? I don't know where they're at, but hopefully they make their way back into the story at some point. Good question. Um, mm-hmm. And I am terrified for next week because the title of the episode is called Oathbreaker, and I saw in the preview <gasps> that somebody went to Ramsey and was like, I have a gift, and I'm terrified that somebody has found Sansa and they're giving Sansa back to Ramsey. Well, Oathbreaker. Sansa's break- going to die or something terrible is going to happen to her. Um, and also the bridge that was on uh, Pike that... Uh, Daylon was walking on was weird and creaky, but it was one of the most visually stunning and visually awesome things that's been on the show so far. Absolutely love that scene. Anyway, I love you guys. I love your podcast. I'm looking forward to listening to it this week. Hope you have a great week. Well, thank you very much, Becky. Really appreciate that. Uh, as far as Oathbreaker is concerned, that is actually Jamie Lannister's name. Oh, that's that's and what they that's what they called him after he had killed right. King Aerys. So. That's right. And I was thinking maybe going towards what you were talking about with Jon Snow, that maybe he no longer has an oath to keep. Well, exactly. So I'm I'm curious what that's ooh. Yeah, maybe that maybe that has to do with John. Maybe that has to do with Jamie. That can mean a lot right. of things. Now when when Tywin Lannister smelted down ice, <gasps> he created he created two swords. Yep. One he gave to to Shithead. One he gave to Jamie. Yep. The one he the one he gave to Jamie when Jamie gave it to Brienne. Brienne. He renamed it Oathkeeper. Oathkeeper. What, right. Yep, that's yep. correct. So I don't know. There's a lot of uh, oath breaking and a lot of oath keeping. I can't wait mm. to hear how this is going to turn out. Well, here we have a call from uh, anonymous from Florida. Ooh. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Blog. Uh, Hi. Just uh, calling in about the Game of Thrones episode. Um, Good. So just a real quick, not necessarily recap, but just ideas on uh, what they they covered tonight. So, Bran, we saw some flashbacks. Seeing Hodor speak was awesome. Uh, one of the questions, there are a couple of questions I have are, uh, how long have they been sitting in that cave? Like, I'd get frustrated, too, if, as Mira, I'm just sitting in the cave for a year. But yeah, it would suck. Uh, moving on to, to Davos and uh, Castle Black. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Mark one for the Giants. Uh, <laughs> Sir Alistair, go fuck yourself. Go get in whatever cell you need to. And uh, I'm really becoming a big fan of, of Doris at uh, getting down to King's Landing. So the the guy bragging about uh, the size of his cock versus uh, Jamie's uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> looks and sounds a little bit like Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> and then... I thought the uh, the comedic relief there, pissing on the mountain and then getting smashed against the uh, it was very reminiscent mm-hmm. of uh, one one smashing the guy against the wall. So I guess get a mountain versus one one. Uh, it'd be pretty neat. Um, Ooh. The high hero, he's he's got some some big balls. Uh, just, <laughs> hey. All right, Jamie, go ahead and kill me. That's fine. Uh, Cersei, she kind of heart dead. I think with the, the death of her second child, she got a heavy heart, or is she thinking how Tommen will die? Or is his shroud from the prophecy uh, his crown? Uh, Tyrion versus Varys is awesome as always. Speaking <laughs> of giant balls, Tyrion has that pair. The dragons, of, they are awesome. Super smart dragons. And Tyrion punched me in the face. Uh, Bravos, um, yeah, okay, a little bit further along with not too much to talk about. Winterfell, fuck the Karstarks. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, and holy fuck. <laughs> Uh, Ramsey is truly Roos's son. Karstark is a cold motherfucker, but not quite as cold as Ramsey. Holy fucking fuck. These are my notes about uh, the baby and uh, Wanda or Wilda or whatever her name is. Um, so Pike, <laughs> Balon, shut up, Yara. I don't want to hear any sense. Uh, it was cool to see how Balon died. And was the priest at the end of the damp air or just some random priest of the drunk guard? Damn and that was Melisandre. Uh, Melly without a confidence. Uh, it was just weird. Uh, seeing her as a broken woman, uh, uh, her stone wasn't glowing during the last rites, but John's back. And then uh, the next on Game of Thrones trailer gave me a giant flashback. But looking here, but looking forward to hearing this. And again, hopefully, I have the right number. All right, have a good <laughs> one. yes, you have the right number, part. and uh, that is that is definitely a book reader right there. I loved that. That was fantastic. Thank you so much, dude. And now we have our final call, and it's actually from Rem 
from the Sci-Fi Movie Podcast. So uh, he oh, nice. had to share some of his thoughts on this episode, and I got to say I love him. So take it away, Rem. Hey there, it's Rem checking in from the Sci-Fi Movie Podcast. And I needed to drop in some feedback on this episode because I think this might be the best episode of Game of Thrones ever. Wow. And we had these moments, these really great moments, and we're going to talk about those uh, during the course of the show with the resurrection of Jon Snow. That's, of course, the big one. But what I wanted to shine some light on is the smaller moments between the big moments. And I'm talking about instances like the scene in the sept with Jamie and Tommen, and then the High Sparrow comes in, and you see Jamie just ready to kill this guy. And and then when the Faith shows up, you could see Jamie doing this mental calculation of, how many of these guys can I take out? And I love that. It was a nice piece of tension. Another good piece of tension when Cersei is going to see Tommen and she's got the mountain with him. And the King's Guard says, I'm sorry, we can't let you pass. And in that moment, you think, is the mountain going to pull his sword and start swinging? Actually, no. Cersei retreats, the mountain leaves, and you see the head of the King's Guard go, oh, <laughs> really glad that mm-hmm. didn't happen. And the other part that I really enjoyed is that scene between Brienne and Sansa. And this is so natural. This is so smart. This is so accurate. This is what people would be doing. So when Brienne is with Sansa, Sansa says, how's are you doing? Unlike some of the TV shows that might not discuss the relationships between sisters as much as they could, <laughs> it seemed very accurate for Sansa to be saying, how's Arya? Is she looking okay? And when Brienne says, oh, she doesn't really dress like a woman, and Sansa says, no, she wouldn't. Nice little bits of character development. And I think what's happening is we're seeing all of the groundwork for these characters that has been laid over the past five years, we're starting to see these connections really happen. And I think this episode tells us that from now until the end of the series, it's going to hit the ground running and it's going to be a real ride. So really enjoying the show. Thanks for doing the podcast. And Mr. Blog, looking forward to joining you on a future episode of Game of Microphones. (laughs) Indeed. Well, Ram, I am very excited to have you join me. Eventually, for an episode of Game of Microphones, he will be joining us, and I'm I'm really looking forward to that. So, uh, thank you guys so much for those uh, great great voicemails. Finally, yeah, eight one three Joffrey is finally paying off. So we had not really had too many calls from that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for writing in, whether it's on Facebook or email or voicemail. We do appreciate it. Oh, Cindy. Why don't you go ahead and tell us what's coming up next week on Game of Thrones? Uh, Season 6, Episode 3, entitled Oathbreaker, written by series co-creators David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, and directed by Daniel Sackheim. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Sackheim has directed episodes for lots of TV shows, including The Americans, The Leftovers, Walking Dead, and going all the way back to the X Files. Oh man, uh, have you have you watched the Americans at all? I watched a little bit of it in the beginning, but I'm a huge fan of the Leftovers Me and the X Files. I haven't seen. No, wait. If, correct Walking me if Dead. I'm wrong. Uh, last Halloween, didn't you go as one of the uh, <laughs> with Sherry Moreford? We with were Sherry, the. Right. Um, I'm we blanking the out guilt- on the name. <laughs> the guilty, the guilty remnant. remnant. Yes, yes, that's we it. were. And you want to know uh, just a quick little side story that made me so happy because. Some people knew who we were. Some people didn't. Um, and I was walking back behind the curtain area and walking towards me was Denai Guerrera, oh. who does not come to a lot of our conventions. <laughs> no, she doesn't. I've not actually like met her myself, where some of the other actors, I they know me and I know them because sure, every yeah. one of our conventions. And she was walking with other people and they were clearly walking to her booth and I wasn't going to, you know, other than nodding hello, I wasn't going to stop them or anything. And she looked at me and she goes, oh! <gasps> I love your costume. Oh, and I that's, was like, that's it. Day made. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And I, I, yeah, I haven't had the opportunity to meet her either because uh, she's sort of one of those. Yes. Unicorns. <laughs> yeah. She is a bit of a unicorn and, and, <laughs> and I've got such a wicked crush on her. It's not even funny. Oh, so I don't gorgeous. know. But uh, it is funny. You talk about like how some of the actors you get to know and, and some you don't. Right. Right. Jose Pablo Contillo. <gasps> oh, well, he's my con husband. We all love and oh, know this dude. If if you if con you, actor husband, I have a con vendor husband, con actor husband, and a con <laughs> husband. So you, he's my con actor husband. 
that dude is like the coolest dude in the He's world. He's the best. And I <laughs> finally, it took me forever to finally get around to watching Chappie. Oh, I and like it, Chappie. And what's funny is I have a signed picture from him from America. He signed it, you know, Fight yeah. Back America. And I hadn't seen it yet. And I felt terrible. <laughs> this was in San Diego. <laughs> this was in San Diego when I, when I saw it was last July. We were chatting. And I finally f- saw it. And, uh, and as you know, He's like the nicest human being yes. on the planet. I mean, and to have a beer with the guy is just a great experience. Have a beer with Jose Pablo Contillo. He's a great guy. And I'm watching Chappie, and I'm like, oh, my God, my friend just got ripped in half. That's fucking horrible. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it really I upset actually me. texted him um, when I was at the movie. I went with Sharon and Becky, who are also yeah. uh, work for Walker Stalker Con. And, and I sent him a quick text of where we were and – um. And then when I was in there, I and, and I and I don't text with him regularly. I do have his phone number, but I'll send him a text oh, once in a while. But um, <laughs> he uh, so I sent a text and said that we were there. And then when we got in there and, and it started, and I it wasn't quite the movie that I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And I said, "Oh my god, is this movie going to make me cry?" And he was like, he made a joke about um like oil tears or robot tears Aww. or something. And then when that happened to him, I just went, "No." <laughs> Oh, and I, I didn't so hear back from him it. until like two days later. And but he was like, "Oh, I guess you just saw me get ripped apart." <laughs> that was so upsetting. I mean, that was upsetting. But actually, uh, Mrs. Blog and I were watching it. Like I said, just recently, and and she was just like, "She's like that movie's really sad." It was, and it was that really good, so and it was sad. cute. They're so too. mean to Chappy. They're so mean to Chappy. <laughs> I, I I really like that movie. It got shit on, but I it really did. liked that and, movie. But I, I liked it as well. Yeah. So, good. Jose, I don't know. I hated seeing him getting ripped apart. No. Spoilers. Oops. Oops, sorry. I guess, yeah. Jose gets ripped <laughs> apart. Sorry. Spoilers. Um, you don't know how, though. So, eh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I cut you off. We were talking about the Americans, the Leftovers, Walking Dead, uh, oh. David Sackheim as the director. Yeah. Of next week. Uh, and the synopsis is Daenerys meets her future. Bran meets the past. Tommen confronts the High Sparrow. Arya trains to be no one. Varys finds an answer. And Ramsay gets a gift. Hmm. Hmm. Gift. wonder what that could be. It was the I gift of pain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we would all support <laughs> Ramsey getting the gift of pain. Oh, I love that. I I really hate these syn- synopses. Um, yeah. They're so vague. They're torture. Daenerys meets her future. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know. I'm going to go to sleep and I'm going to time travel and wake up and see my future. It's amazing. What does that mean? I don't well, know. Maybe she just, they take her to meet all of those other um, widows. Oh, God. Oh. And she can see, like, what her future could be. I don't know. Ooh, good point. That'd be like, oh, I have to go, like, hide away in a cave with a bunch of widows. Well, in all of that, I got to say, what really gets me excited. <laughs> God, that sucks. What really gets me excited, Tommen confronting the High Sparrow. High Sparrow. I hope that's not the last of Tommen. I was going to say, I have a really <laughs> bad feeling that could be the end of Tommen. That would really, really suck. And then... uh <laughs> Poor, poor Cersei. I never thought I'd say those words. Oh, poor Cersei. Poor Cersei. Uh, she might have that uh, witch's prophecy finally really come true and have the last of her child, her child, her last of her children die. So I hope that's not the case. Wow. I gotta say, Cindy, we covered one hell of a great episode. We did. I got lucky. I got a lucky one. Yes, I you think. did. And I'm really mm-hmm. hoping that the rest of the season is going to be. Oh. As great as this one. This, it is, will this be. is spectacular. But Cindy, man, thank you so much for joining thank me you. on this one. This was I really so so glad to talk to you. I have not seen you since November. Oh, um, has it been that long? It's been that long since, wow. since the, uh, what I refer to as the Halloween Walker Walker Stalker mm-hmm. Con. I think the last time you saw me, I was dressed as a giant teddy bear. Oh you know, you, oh, may, cuddly. you, you may have been the uh the guilty <laughs> remnant, but I was Ted. So <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love Ted. Gotta love Ted. Well, well thank, thank you, you so for much having for having jo- me. I really enjoyed oh, absolutely it. Absolutely my pleasure. And and it was so great to talk to you. And I really I hope everybody enjoyed this episode. I most certainly did. Not only of Game of Thrones, but also of Game of Microphones. But you ready to close out the show? I am. Very good.
If you'd like to leave us a voicemail, you can call us at 813-563-3739. That's 813-JOFFREY. And now we know it actually works, so by all means, call us. If you'd like to write in, you can email us at game at podcastica.com and check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash G-O-M podcast. And be sure to check out our other great podcasts and our growing network at podcastica.com. And we do have a lot of great things. We're up to 10, uh, 10 podcasts in, at Podcastica, including, of course, Under the Comic Covers, which myself and Grace, and the Fear of the Walking Dead cast is going on right now, which is always a good one. And also, you're going to be able to find Game of Microphones uh, very soon, if not right now, as you're hearing this, at fanfest.com. Yay! Under podcast. So hopefully uh, that's all worked out as well, and you'll see us there as well. Mm-hmm. But join us next week for Game of Thrones Season 6, Episode 3, Oathbreaker. <sighs> it's already with... going too fast. <laughs> I know. <laughs> with myself and Rima Joe. But until then, that's our show. Thanks for listening.